Hey everybody and welcome back to Reach Films. Today we're revisiting the M1 MacBook Air, specifically the base model, which will be celebrating its third anniversary this November. And guess what? Even after three years, it still holds up the title as the best budget laptop for pretty much anyone within the Apple ecosystem, so let's dive into the details. First up, let's talk about the impressive all-day battery life. With up to 18 hours of usage on a single charge, you can go longer than ever before without needing to plug in. It's perfect for those long work days or when you're on the move. But it's not just about battery life. The M1 chip brings powerful performance to the table. Thanks to its 8-core CPU, the MacBook Air delivers up to 3.5 times faster performance than the previous Intel generation, all while consuming significantly less power. Whether you're into professional quality editing or action-packed gaming, the M1 MacBook Air base model can handle a lot of these tasks with ease. Now when it comes to power consumption and how to charge the M1 MacBook Air, something that I think is overlooked is the fact that the M1 MacBook Air is the lowest power consuming computer in the Apple M1 M2 lineup. You only need a 30 watt charger and if you're just going to charge the laptop, you're not going to power it at the same time, you can even use a 20 watt charger, lower wattage than a 30 watt. But I carry these little 30 watt chargers and 20 watt chargers from Anchor and as you can see, this 30 watt charger right here is way smaller than even the included charger that Apple gives you for the MacBook Air. So being able to use these small chargers, not only to power my MacBook Air, but being able to charge my camera like the R7 and FX30 I use regularly, being able to charge my phone quickly, a lot of my accessories, my drone, it just doesn't stop. And I can use the same charger for all of my accessories, including my laptop. That's one of the things that has really made the M1 MacBook Air happily added to my lineup, especially compared to my older computer that used MagSafe. Now again, I know you can charge the M2 MacBook Airs with a USB-C cord as well, even though the MagSafe cord is technically plugging into power delivery as well. It's just nice to have this super low power consumption computer that seems not only the same power cords, but charger blocks as well as all of my other cameras, accessories, and whatnot. Another standout feature is its super fast memory. With eight gigabytes of unified memory, your entire system becomes snappy, responsive. It can easily handle memory intensive tasks like multi-tab browsing and opening large graphic files without breaking a sweat. Now, eight gigabytes of RAM doesn't sound like a lot in the modern computer world. However, with Apple Silicon, things work a bit differently, albeit with a few trade-offs, which we'll discuss in a second. Now, let's not forget the stunning display. It has a 13.3 inch retina display, which brings images to life with new levels of realism. Text appears sharp and clear. Colors are more vibrant than ever before. It's a visual feast for your eyes, even if it may be a bit small. That's why I like to consider it my travel computer. So I wanna to touch about portability real quick. And when you're a one-man band filmmaker, content creator, traveling filmmaker, and you're traveling with a backpack or trying to really just conserve the amount of total weight you bring, a laptop can make a difference in having the MacBook Air with how light it is definitely makes a huge difference for those kinds of content creators, filmmakers, whoever who needs a laptop with them. It's powerful enough to where you're not sacrificing too much because you're probably not going to be doing crazy editing while you're traveling anyways. And at the same time, it makes your overall bag lighter. Plus, you may be throwing this bag around a little bit and you definitely feel a little bit safer with your less expensive computer in the back of your bag versus maybe a more expensive computer Computer, that's your primary computer. One of the notable aspects of the MacBook Air is its fanless design. This means your laptop stays cool and runs quietly even when tackling intense tasks. No distracting fan noises to disrupt your workflow. However, one downside to having no fan is the potential for the computer to throttle performance due to the potential overheating, which can actually be solved with a neat little DIY hack, which I'll put a link to right here somewhere and in the description below, which pretty much prevents thermal throttling when you do this hack and I'll show you how to do it in that video. Now let's address an important point. We are specifically discussing the base model M1 MacBook Air, which you can find for around 700-ish dollars on Amazon right now. I'll have a link in the description, but it's a huge reason why this is such a great value machine in 2023. But there is a big if, and that's if your budget allows, and this is going to be your main computer, not a travel computer, not a second computer, it's worth considering the M2 machines. When it comes to the M1 base model versus the M2 base model Air, it's interesting that the M1 Air in some ways performs actually a little bit better. But once you upgrade your M2 machine, you upgrade the RAM to 16 gigs, you upgrade the hard drive to 512 or higher, the M2 becomes a more powerful machine. 
And that's due to some issues on how Apple implemented their SSDs when choosing a 256 gigabyte configuration on the M2 MacBook Air. So if you do upgrade the RAM and the hard drive in the M2 Air, it will definitely provide a noticeable change in performance over the base model M1. When it comes to filmmakers, content creators, or anyone involved in video editing, the base model M1 MacBook Air is best suited as a travel companion. If you're in a situation similar to mine where you have a decently spec desktop machine as your primary computer, the M1 Air is the perfect complement for working on the go or while traveling. Now, as a travel laptop, maximizing its performance requires leaving the computer's hard drive as empty as possible to utilize swap memory performance. I recommend using an external NVMe SSD to store all of your files for editing and storage, compensating for the limited eight gigabytes of RAM. It is a game changer when it comes to using this computer as an editing powerhouse. In my opinion, the price to performance ratio is why the M1 MacBook Air is still the best bang for your buck laptop in 2023. Now let's talk about how I use the M1 Air as a video professional. Firstly, for editing, I've been using DaVinci Resolve as my main editor. I have tried both Final Cut X and I've tried Adobe Premiere Pro, but out of the three, DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro X perform the best because they adapt to the specific machine configuration, ensuring optimal performance. Next, let's touch on live streaming. Providing live streaming capabilities for clients has become even more important since the pandemic began. The M1 MacBook Air's portability and extended battery life make the whole process easier. You can stream on the go without worrying or running out of power. My last use case for the MacBook Air is using it as a DIT or digital imaging technician machine. On set, I rely on it to transfer footage from memory cards to hard drives swiftly. The MacBook Air's Thunderbolt 3 ports enable fast transfer speeds, allowing me to clear my memory cards quickly and get back to filming. It has even reduced the need for excessive memory cards when shooting in formats like the Red Komodo's R3D RAW. So there you have it. Three years later and the M1 MacBook Air continues to shine as the best budget laptop for everybody. It's incredible battery life, powerful performance, super fast memory, stunning display, and fanless design make it an unbeatable choice. And that's going to be it for today's video. I want to thank you all for watching, everybody. If you have any questions on the M1 MacBook Air, make sure to ask in the comments below or any content you want to see asked there as well. If you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos from the channel. Until next time, my name is Jeff Fagan. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and I will see you in the next video.